So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, <clears throat> first, we'll introduce ourselves. My name is Camilo Sedeno, and I've been working in community outreach specifically for oral health for about 10 years. Uh, and we're happy to be here to provide you with a uh, little bit of uh, information today. And I have my coworker here, Nandita. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Nandita. Hi, everyone. My name is Nandita. I work with Camilo. We are oral health. Uh, liaisons at the Oral Health Collaborative Consortium. Um, awesome. I am a dental hygienist by trade. I worked uh, in the clinic for over 10 years. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here, present with you guys, to you guys, uh, hopefully an informative uh, educational presentation um, this morning. All right, so like Nanita mentioned, we work for the Oral Health Collaborative Consortium and we're both liaisons uh, for the OHCC. The Oral Health Collaborative Consortium is uh, funded and uh, supervised by the LA County Department of Public Health and the Oral Health Program. And we're part of the UCLA School of Dentistry. And our director is Dr. Hongu Liu, who's a professor at uh, the UCLA School of Dentistry. And the Oral Health Collaborative Consortium, our main role is to help to implement and carry out the objectives of the Community Oral Health Improvement Plan, which was developed by the uh, County Department of Health in 2019 and essentially there are several objectives to help improve the oral health and the quality of oral health care that citizens in LA County can access. So our team focuses uh, for the most part on the first four objectives that you see here. So oral health education, which is what we're doing here today. We work toward increasing oral health access. Uh, we work with various healthcare providers to increase care coordination so that way there's a no wrong door policy uh, to get quality oral health care. Uh, and we also work towards the development of the workforce in the dental field, making sure that <clears throat> our oral health care professionals have all the tools that they need to work with our most underserved communities and can meet the needs of all members of the community in Los Angeles County. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about the importance of oral health, home visitation and how that relates to oral health. We'll cover a little bit about pregnancy and oral health, as well as infants, infant and oral health, infant oral health, and uh, we'll share some resources for parents and for providers with you as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick poll. We wanna gauge um, your feelings and thoughts on some of these oral health topics. Uh, and I know that we have a link to share with you to access this poll. So we'll give a few minutes um, to, we'll share this link. Jenna, if you, if you could share the link for me on the chat, that would be awesome. Thank you. And uh, uh, we'll give you a few minutes to go ahead and complete this poll and then we can move on with the, the presentation. Okay, can you see my screen, everybody? Yes. Okay, great. So the Minty, just go to www.minty.com and the code is 62337749. 62337749. The first question is, when thinking about health topics, how likely is that you will bring it up to, or how likely is it that you'll bring up oral health with your families? All right, so we've got five people on so far. We've got like a 2.7 is the average. Does anyone need assistance getting onto the Minty? No, okay. All right, great. Holding steady at 2.8. Okay, next question. When thinking of health priorities, how important is it to care for your teeth? I lost three people, where'd you all go? Okay, I see six people. I have not come up yet. Uh, it's high priority. 
Yeah, that's good. Maybe like 10 more seconds before I move on. Where's my last person? I've bit lost you. It's always interesting to see the number of people. <laughs> okay, great. All right, next one. As of now, how easily can you access the proper materials to easily educate your families about oral health? I always like to see the bar move. That's fun. All right. Eight, number nine, come back. Six months, my first two come back. All right. As of now, how important is oral health during a pregnancy? All right. As of now, how confident are you in showing your families how to care for their baby's new teeth? All right, about a two. All right, that's it for now. We're going to come back and do a post uh, post webinar poll, so don't do anything yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Jen, for sharing that. And it's really awesome to see the answers uh, live. Real time. And yeah, real time. especially that last question there about your confidence level. So we're hoping that that number will be higher by the time we're done today. So I'll pass it on to Nandita. So uh, we're going to start first talking a little bit about oral health. Um, what is oral health? According to the World Health Organization, oral health is a key indicator uh, of overall health, well-being, and even quality of life. Uh, speaking from experience as a clinical hygienist, um, the mouth is really a window into the health of your body. So a lot of the uh, systemic or uh, other diseases in our bodies you can actually see them in the mouth. So, um, and I'll, I'm going to go over them in the next few slides. But you know, patients that I saw that had uncontrolled diabetes, um, uncontrolled heart disease, uh, certain types of uh, eating disorders um, is definitely very prevalent um, and very noticeable on the tooth surfaces or the gum surfaces. Um, so, oral health is multifaceted, um, and it includes the ability to speak, smile, smile, taste. Um, to swallow, uh, convey a range of emotions through facial expressions with confidence um, without pain and discomfort. So um, it's, it's at times uh, something that we can take for granted for those of us that maybe are lucky enough to um, not, uh, uh, not uh, suffer from any type of oral disease, but for those of our community members that do, um, uh, it, is, it is a very um, hard thing to kind of overcome um, at times. So, on the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit more about how uh, oral health is related to overall health. Um, so again, the mouth is a window into the body and oral disease can actually spread or increase the risk of bacterial infections, fungal infections, and other diseases. So here in the slide, you can see that gum disease in particular, um, there are different types of bacteria that cause cavities, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, and there are different types of bacteria that cause gum disease. Um, and in particular, as a hygienist, I dealt with a lot of patients who had some form of gum disease. Um, and the linkages here are pretty astounding. Um, so gum disease is linked to Alzheimer's, uh, which is, you know, brain-related, stroke, again, brain-related, lung disease, lung conditions, um, different parts of your body, kidneys, heart, diabetes, which is uh, the pancreas, uh, cancer, arthritis, which, is your, your, which are your bones. Um, the two that I like to highlight are diabetes, diabetes and heart disease, as they are pretty rampant in our community. Um, again, those patients who had uncontrolled 
uh, diabetes, whether they were not controlling it through diet or medication, um, they usually had a pretty chronic form of gum disease present in their mouth. Um, diabe diabetics typically have something called delayed wound healing. So if they are to get injured, um, they, or, or have some type of disease in their, like in their mouth, um, you know, it takes longer for them to heal. Same thing with those patients who have uncontrolled heart disease. Um, we have found uh, the bacteria that causes heart disease is also found in the mouth. So those are the two that I really like to highlight, but it's really interesting to see that um, gum disease or oral disease is really linked to a lot of different um, parts or systems of our bodies. Um, so in the next slide, we're gonna talk a little more, switch gears a little bit and talk about children, children's oral health, specifically in California. Um, so dental cavities in kids, um, it's, it's really common. It's a significant problem. Um, it's more common than asthma, if you can believe that. 54%, uh, some of the stats we have here, 54% of California, California children have some type of cavity experienced by kindergarten. 28% um, have untreated decay and 19% have extensive decay, which we're gonna kind of see some photos here um, in the next few slides. Um, so, you know, recognition of this is important. Um, earlier intervention, ongoing risk-based care, innovative collaborative systems are also very important. Um, so really just educating, right, on the importance of taking the child to the dentist um, before their first birthday. That's our recommendation is either the first eruption of the first tooth or before their first birthday. Um, now, you know, it's a very uh, simple appointment if they have a very, like a very small tooth that's erupted, but it just gets them used to having somebody look inside their mouth. Um, you know, making sure that they are getting to the dentist early, making sure they have a home, home care routine at home um, so that we can kind of prevent some of this, some of the dental caries um, problem that we're having, especially in California. Um, so I'm going to kind of take a step back here in the next slide and, and talk a little bit about what causes tooth decay. Um, so tooth decay is a multi-step process that results in, a dis in the destruction of tooth structure. Um, and the way that that happens is that the bacteria in the mouth converts the sugars that we eat from our, our daily diet. All of us, even if it's a healthy diet, you have some type of carbohydrate that's in your diet. Um, and then that acid basically takes away the minerals in the tooth enamel causing demineralization or breakdown of that tooth, which is the first sign of a cavity. Um, so you can see here on the photo, these are baby teeth um, or, or a child's tooth. I think the right side is a baby tooth and the left side photo is a permanent tooth. But these spots and lesions that you can see right by the gum tissue, though that is a beginning sign of a cavity. Um, and it's really actually very easy to see. If you were to lift up the lip, you can kind of see it. A lot of times that's where it's at, right? Because little kids are, uh, it's harder for them to brush um, and floss. And so uh, typically there's a lot of plaque or food that gets stuck around that gum line area. And you can kind of see those lesions there. So, um, you know, it's really important uh, that we are also watching um, the nutrition, uh, you know, sugary drinks um, and sticky snacks, things like dried fruit, which typically um, some parents feel like is a very healthy snack is very acidic and has tons of sugar in there. So um, we really wanna make sure that we limit those, um, those sometimes foods, if you will, sticking to more um, uh, uh, basic products like milks and cheeses and nuts and things like that to avoid um, having uh, tooth decay uh, uh, being caused. Um, so some of the impacts of uh, dental disease on children, um, it's, it's actually very substantial, especially for low-income children. Um, Early uh, signs of tooth loss uh, is sometimes due to poor nutrition that I just, like I mentioned, um, impaired speech development, lowered self-esteem, adverse behaviors. Um, there is actually a lot of missed uh, school for our elementary school kids um, when they have a dental infection because a lot of times parents can't figure out like what is, why they're either misbehaving or not able to concentrate or or things of that nature. And a lot of times it's related to a, a, a dental infection that's causing pain. Um, so it's an added stress to the family because sometimes, you know, once it's past a certain point, um, it can be very expensive to the family to have a tooth extracted or things, a root canal done, baby root canal done, things like that. So some of the photos that I'd like to highlight here on this slide, again, 
on the going from the left to the right, um, the same lesions that I showed in the other photo, you can see there, this is, this is actually a little more what we call habitated or, you know, a little deeper. So you can see, uh, again, it's on the top of that child's, um, the top part of the child's mouth um, and on the top teeth there. And um, it's right by that gum line. So important to lift the lip and look underneath. Um, this child next to uh, the next photo there actually has uh, an abscess. So if you can see, I know it's a small photo, but if you can see on the left side, um, it, uh, that child is swollen from a dental infection. So it's really, yeah, right there. Thanks, Camilo. Um, it's, he's, you know, he's swollen from a dental infection. So really, really painful, extensive treatment. Same thing with the photo next. Um, it looks like that's uh, baby bottle cavities. Uh, so that's another thing that we um, educate on is not to put the child to bed with, with milk or formula, uh, breast milk or formula or juice or sodas. We've seen that crazy enough, but we do see that um, because it will just sit right in the surface on that front surface and, it, and then it causes those really severe cavities. Um, and one thing I should mention, baby teeth are really important. I know they fall out, but they're really important for that. It's like the pathway for the permanent teeth. And so baby teeth are, are need to be cared for just like your permanent teeth do. Um, so moving on here to the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about what recent um, science has, uh, has taught us about dental caries in young children. So one of the things is that dental cavities or caries is an infectious transmissible disease. So babies are actually not born with any oral bacteria in their mouth. Um, it's usually transferred from the mother or the primary uh, caregiver by maybe uh, sharing this, like sharing spoon, like a spoon or a pacifier, sharing drinks, things like that. So if the mother has several cavities or oral disease in her mouth, she's then passing it on to her child. So um, again, karyogenic bacteria is just a fancy word for saying um, cavity causing bacteria, bacteria that causes cavities, like I mentioned at the beginning. There are different, different bacteria that cause cavities and different bacteria that cause gum disease. And in this case, they're talking about the bacteria that cause cavities. Again, they're generally transmitted from mother to child. Um, and they, you know, and, and usually they colonize and then the teeth shortly erupt after that. Um, uh, so it's really important to also educate our mothers as well to make sure that they're brushing and flossing their teeth um, so that it doesn't get transmitted down to their children um, as they are usually the primary source of, um, uh, of dental cavities. So being said that dental caries is, is transmissible, it's also preventable. It's highly, highly preventable. If there's a good home care routine at home, brushing and flossing, making sure that child or, or the mother is seeing the dentist every six months or whenever needed, um, dental cavities is completely a preventable disease. Um, so we'll go on to the next slide here. Um, so some common oral health issues discussed during home visits can include good oral hygiene practices, healthy food choices, so nutrition is big, um, strategies for preventing tooth decay, um, and, and the importance of regular dental visits. Um, one thing to mention for our patients who are pregnant, um, hormonal changes during pregnancy actually can cause something called uh, pregnancy-induced gingivitis. It's, it's literally has very little to do with home care. Um, it has a lot to do with the hormonal changes that happen during pregnancy, but the home care can help, um, you know, help with those, the, those changes that are happening in the mouth specifically for the, for the, for the pregnant patient. So, um, you know, uh, it can negatively impact the, the overall health and the health of the baby. Um, Pregnancy induced gingivitis, if it's not controlled, is linked to preterm birth and low birth weight for babies. Um, so very, very important to make sure we are educating our pregnant mothers and patients. It's totally safe to go to the dentist throughout their pregnancy. There are a lot of different procedures that we do in the dental offices if the patient is pregnant. It's kind of like a myth and a, and a misinformation that you can't go to the dentist when you're pregnant. Probably better to go when in the beginning stages, not when you're like when the patient is super pregnant. It's probably not the most comfortable place to be. Um, but regardless, it's it's very safe. Um, and there are, like I mentioned, a lot of a lot of different things that can be done in the office um, uh, for those patients. So uh, moving on to the next slide here. Thank you, Camilo. Um, so some of the messaging we can give our patients is is or, or excuse me, to our parents, educate our parents for the children. 
um, is to be a role model, you know, brush your teeth daily in front of your child so that, that, you know, that child will see like, oh, mom's brushing. I want to do that. Dad's brushing. I want to do the same thing. Um, you know, checking the child's teeth every month, lifting the lip. I've mentioned that a couple of times. Um, brushing with a fluoridated toothpaste at least once a day, um, ideally twice a day. So two times a day for two full minutes. We always recommend a fluoridated toothpaste. The brand is not important as long as it's there's fluoride in that toothpaste. Um, again, nutrition, snacking on healthy foods, avoiding lots of sugar exposures, and making sure, I've already mentioned this, but making sure the child sees the dentist before their first birthday or on the site of um, the first tooth erupting. Um, one thing about the fluoridated toothpaste, for our kids who are under the age of three, we recommend a grain of rice size amount of toothpaste. And for our kids that are over the age of three, we recommend, and even for adults, we recommend a pea size amount of toothpaste. Um, so uh, that's a little bit of kind of some messages that you can kind of help um, educate your parents on. Um, we're gonna kind of switch gears and I'm gonna hand it back to Camilo to talk a little bit about pregnancy and oral health. Thanks, Nandita. All right, so let's talk a little bit about pregnancy and oral health. Nandita touched on it a little bit already where you know, pregnant women are especially susceptible to oral health issues because of the hormonal changes. And there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, letting people know that it's not safe to go to the dentist. And like we've already mentioned during pregnancy, it, it is safe and it is very important to uh, seek out dental uh, health care during your pregnancy. If the pregnancy is planned, ideally, you can get started ahead of time and <clears throat> visit the dentist. And like Lindita mentioned, getting to the dentist in the earlier part of the pregnancy. Uh, it is still safe to visit the dentist later on uh, during the pregnancy. However, you know, like Nanita mentioned, it can be very uncomfortable for the patient to sit back, uh, lay back on that dental chair uh, when they're in a full-term pregnancy. And it can require, you know, but there's some strategies that we'll share with you um, regarding how to deal with that as well. So uh, to talk a little bit about what's on this slide, uh, untreated gum disease, as you can see, can harm systemic health. And like Nanita mentioned already, there can be some negative outcomes uh, to that pregnancy as a result of poor oral health. Um, and then once the baby's born, we have to be careful. Um, mothers really have to be careful to uh, try not to pass on that cavity causing bacteria to newborns. As Nanita mentioned, babies are not born with the cavity causing bacteria and it's generally passed on by that primary caretaker. So we generally recommend not to share utensils uh, don't clean the pacifier with your mouth. Uh, that's a really easy way to, to pass that on to, to kids. And as you can see by the graphic here on the right, children are three times more likely to have tooth decay if their mothers have high levels of untreated tooth decay and high levels of that uh, decay causing bacteria in their mouth. So we really want to be um, give emphasis to uh, pregnant women that, you know, it's important to take care of their teeth as well. Uh, and it's an important part of, of making sure that they have a, a healthy pregnancy as well. So uh, here's a few statistics for you. You can see here that not very many women visit the dentist during pregnancy. And again, that has a lot to do with um, a lot of misinformation out there. And the percentage is even lower for Hispanic women. There uh, are a lot of those like urban tales, wives tales, you know, that that take place. And, and, and the Hispanic community is very... Uh, you know, keen on sharing anecdotal type um, evidence with each other. And uh, clearly this leads to, again, misinformation and uh, a very low percentage of women visiting the dentist, even women with, uh, with insurance. Uh, you can see that there is a uh, dental care, uh, a rate of decline in dental care during pregnancy. So we really wanna make sure that we tell our pregnant women, our pregnant mothers to, to visit the dentist. Uh, and again, what are some of the recommendations during pregnancy? Definitely brush twice a day. Uh, that nighttime brushing time is super important. The mouth becomes very dry when you go to bed and it can be uh, a really easy moment for bacteria to, to develop and uh, for dental decay uh, to, to take place during uh, the nighttime. So making sure you brush twice a day for two minutes. Flossing once a day um, is super important. The toothbrush can't reach in between your teeth. So uh, that's why we recommend that you floss once a day to make sure you remove all the plaque from in between the teeth uh, and to remove any food that might be trapped there. 
definitely watch your sugar intake <clears throat> and be sure to visit the dentist every six months like we've already shared. Uh, so some of the treatment tips based on uh, what stage of pregnancy you might be in or the mothers uh, might be in and when, uh, what they can do when visiting the dentist to, to help make it a little easier. So as you can see here, the first trimester um, should begin early if, if extensive care is needed. Uh, the first trimester can be a little difficult because of the morning sickness. Uh, and it's also, you know, a, a delicate time in the pregnancy. So you definitely um, want to make sure that you schedule visits in the afternoon. You know, it'll make it a little easier to deal with that morning sickness. And again, um, if you can, if, if a pregnant woman can get into the dentist prior to the pregnancy, if it is a planned pregnancy, then uh, that's the ideal, especially if extensive care is needed. During the second trimester, this is the ideal time for dental care. Um, you know, it's, uh, you don't have as much morning sickness uh, during this time and hopefully. Uh, and uh, also, you know, the baby is still an ideal size to where it's relatively um, comfortable still to lay back in the dental chair and, um, and receive the treatment that's needed. During the third trimester, um, you uh, definitely want to encourage pregnant women to uh, stand and, and take breaks during long appointments, again, because it can be so difficult to, to lay with that full-term pregnancy to lay on your back on the dental chair. And uh, asking uh, the dentist to, to elevate the head. And most dental professionals are trained on, on, on how to treat pregnant women as well. So um, you want to make sure that, uh, that all of these things, you know, that you're allowing for uh, encouraging women to, to get up, take breaks during long appointments and, and just to make sure that they're comfortable throughout the process of, of the dental visit, right? Um, and then we want to uh, promote breastfeeding with, with uh, our pregnant mothers, making sure that, um, Child, children are breastfeed, breastfed uh, helps to develop less, uh, least uh, to a lower likelihood of developing cavities as opposed to um, feeding with, uh, with formula and with other drinks like Nandita mentioned, you know, a lot of times uh, giving babies uh, different types of uh, sugary liquids uh, can obviously lead to, uh, to dental decay and cavities. So breastfeeding also just helps to um, uh, promote good development in that child and, and for them to, to grow up strong and healthy. Infant and early childhood oral. So we're going to give you some tips on how to care for uh, baby's teeth. Um, you saw some pictures earlier that talk about baby bottle tooth decay, uh, which is uh, now called early infant child childhood caries, uh, early childhood caries. So Baby bottle tooth decay or early childhood caries are caused by prolonged exposure to the baby's teeth to sugar. So a lot of times this happens at nighttime uh, or even throughout the day. If, if the child has a bottle in their mouth for long periods of time, especially if that, if that liquid inside the bottle is a sugary liquid, which um, mom's milk and formula can include uh, sugar or does have sugar in it as well. But especially juices and other sugar added drinks, you really want to avoid having a baby walk around uh, or having a bottle in their mouth with those types of sugary liquids for too long of a time. Uh, you want to feed your child, let them finish, you know, their feeding and then take the bottle immediately after that. Uh, so that way they're not sitting there with the nipple of the bottle right in contact with those two front teeth, because that's a really easy way for that baby bottle decay to, to take place. Uh, and then you want to take the time to wipe the child's gum with a damp washcloth uh, after every feeding and take care to reach all the way back because a lot of times baby will pop, babies will pocket food in their cheeks. So you want to reach all the way back to the gums and just making sure that you're taking the time to gently clean the gums, making sure that the gums are free of any debris or, or any liquids um, from that feeding is a good way to prevent uh, that early uh, childhood carry exposure. So here's some more photos for you to be able to see what some early signs of tooth decay look like. Uh, the white discoloration at the, top of the, at the top of the tooth, right where it meets with the gum line, like Nandita mentioned, lifting the lip uh, of the child is a really easy way to make sure uh, if you're doing that once a month uh, or if you're encouraging your parents to do that once a month uh, to check their child's teeth, it's a, it's a good way to make sure that we're keeping an eye on 
um, you know, any potential decay that might be starting. And definitely getting to the dentist after once that first tooth comes out and uh, or by the first birthday, whichever comes first, is a good way of also making sure that uh, children don't develop decay early on and that if they do that, it can be treated early on and not allowed to, to develop into something worse like what you saw in some of the other photos. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about tooth decay and just how it affects children. Uh, I'm, I don't know, you know if any of you have, have ever had a toothache, but it can be one of the more severe pains uh, that you can experience actually. And it being that uh, the, the tooth is, is, is enclosed, is an enclosed structure, right? So when um, infection happens in the tooth, there's no way for that, there's nowhere for that inflammation to go. So that's what causes that intense pain when, uh, when we develop a, a tooth decay and it, and it causes an infection and, and it results in pain. Uh, and then clearly this can affect the child's ability to, to chew. And it also affects their ability to, you know, to develop in a, in a way that, that where they can feel confident because uh, if you're having uh, dental problems uh, and, and issues with your teeth, it's going to be difficult to smile. And then especially for children, when they're learning to speak, you need your teeth to pronounce certain words. You can't say the without your two front teeth, right? So, uh, or any words that involve uh, that, that uh, contact between your tongue and, and your teeth. So you want to make sure that you um, <clears throat> encourage parents to take care of the baby teeth. Upper front center teeth are least protected and affected first, like you can see here as well. So um, things to look out for, right? Uh, here's the uh, visual representation of the amount of toothpaste that parents should be using with their children. Uh, like Nandita mentioned, uh, if the child is three years or younger, you wanna use a very small amount, uh, a, a, rice, a grain of rice size of toothpaste, uh, just a little smear on the toothbrush. But again, making sure that it's fluoridated toothpaste will still help to um, protect that child from developing uh, dental caries and, 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 and from developing uh, tooth decay. Once the child is three years or older, uh, you can use a pea size and that includes us adults. You know, many of us use too much toothpaste at times and uh, you know, everybody likes that nice ribbon of toothpaste on their toothbrush, but all you need is a pea size. Uh, that's more than enough to uh, protect your teeth from, from cavities brushing twice a day for two full minutes. Uh, and as you see here, uh, you can begin using fluoride toothpaste twice a day as soon as the first tooth erupts. So a lot of parents uh, generally will be hesitant to use toothpaste uh, on children who are little, but again, using the adequate amount of toothpaste uh, is what <clears throat> makes sure that it's being done uh, in, a, in a safe and healthy manner. So a grain of rice size for children under three. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about diet and oral health. Uh, we generally try to discourage sippy cups. Uh, definitely, like we mentioned earlier, uh, you don't really wanna introduce them too early on. Sippy cups and other types of um, bottles, pacifiers, and things like that that are kept in the mouth for a long time not only can cause tooth decay, but also uh, they can misshape the, uh, the mouth of the child if it stays in the mouth for too long. So, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, again, a uh, bottle isn't staying for, uh, in the mouth for very long or, or pacifiers or uh, sippy cups or anything like that. Um, and then definitely no bottle uh, when going to bed. You uh, wanna encourage parents to wean the bottle by 12 months of age and water is the safest drink uh, to avoid tooth decay. Water has no calories, water has no sugar, and it's actually healthy for our mouths. It's great to drink water after every meal. It helps to um, kind of reset the, the pH in our mouths as well after we eat. You know, every time we eat, uh, there's a spike in acidity in our mouths just due to the natural process that happens with, with the bacteria that's in the mouth. And, uh, that's a way that uh, tooth decay can take place. So by drinking water after every meal and then also encouraging parents to give their kids water above any other liquid. And then juices, you definitely want to avoid serving it to infants under uh, at the age of one and limit juice intake at all ages, including for us adults. Uh, and then definitely try to avoid um, juices with uh, high fructose corn syrup or with uh, excess amounts of added sugar and um, try to go for a natural juice if, uh, if possible. So 
here we talk about the frequency of snacking a little bit. Uh, the amount of times that we snack and eat throughout the day can also have an effect in uh, our oral health. Like I mentioned uh, a little while ago, every time we eat, we get an increase of acidity inside of our mouths. And so if you think about uh, every time you have sugar, you know, that process is even more uh, intense and uh, you can see the amount of sugar that's contained in the soda, 16 to 18 teaspoons. So you definitely want to avoid giving that to your children. But at the same time, you know, the frequency that eating and snacking happens, uh, basically you, every time you eat, uh, the pH will increase in our mouths. And uh, essentially uh, every time that, that takes place for about 30 minutes after every meal. So you can imagine every snack is an opportunity for tooth decay to take place, especially if it's a sugary or starchy snack. Uh, so we generally encourage uh, parents to only let their children snack on sweets during meal time, maybe like as a dessert immediately after. Uh, so that way uh, snacks and, and meals are only happening throughout a limited amount of times throughout the day. A lot of babies like to um, graze and, and then as parents, you know, we, we let them do that uh, pretty often, but generally you wanna try to limit snack time to a specific time of the day. And uh, if you can have water right after a snack, uh, that's ideal and, and even better if, uh, if the child can brush uh, after every meal, that's even better. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Nandita to share some resources. Yeah, before I get into the resources for parents and providers, uh, Christina mentioned a really good point that I don't think we really touched on, but the surface of the tongue for, um, children and adults as well, it's actually where a lot of your bad breath bacteria uh, harbor on the surface of your tongue. So very important to, to make sure that um, our community members are brushing their teeth, flossing, and also either brushing their tongue or utilizing some, some type of like a tongue scraper or something to remove that bacteria that sits on the tongue surface. The tongue is actually a very important um, part of your mouth that needs to be cleaned as well. So um, utilizing a fluoridated toothpaste, flossing, even a mouth rinse. Um, I, you know, in clinical practice, I used to kind of shy away from recommending mouth rinses because patients would just then just rinse with the mouth rinse and like, oh, I rinse with mouth rinse. I didn't brush or floss. So, you know, it gets kind of like, because it feels good, right? You feel like you got fresh breath. And so, but it is, it is a great tool to get to the surface, uh, you know, your roof, the roof of your mouth, underneath your tongue, the areas that the floss and the brush don't get to your tongue surfaces. Um, but yes, thank you, Christina, for that really um, helpful reminder about brushing and keeping the tongue clean. So um, some of the resources that we have, um, and we, you know, these are available, we can, Camilo and I can leave our um, emails in the chat. Uh, we have access to a lot of great resources. Um, digitally um, and even paper copies and, and posters. So the first is the Love Your Baby's Teeth campaign. This is a media campaign um, put on by a media campaign by LA County Department of Public Health. Uh, basically, you know, there are just like there's developmental milestones for kids and teenagers, there are also dental milestones. And so um, basically this is a campaign all around dental milestones from uh, infancy all the way to the teenage years. Um, and so it's basically just promoting uh, that we want to make sure that we're taking care of baby teeth, um, giving a good, you know, good head start for those kids uh, to get, you know, to have a healthy future, a dental future, um, if they're taking care of their baby teeth. So some of these uh, milestone information, this is what they kind of look like. And so this is from um, 12 months of age to three years old. They're basically just some tips um, if we go back to the previous slide really, really quick, I just want to mention that we have this in a poster form as well in Spanish and English. And so um, if anyone is ever interested in, you know, posting it anywhere or have any organizations that would be interested, we're happy to provide those. Um, uh, in the next slide, uh, I was just mentioning. So, uh, yeah, there, these are for dental milestones throughout um, from infancy up to uh, the teenager. So just reminding, making sure to brush your child's teeth twice a day, lifting their lip weekly um, to check for any white or brown spots um, on the teeth, which again could be a sign of a cavity and visit, visiting the dentist every um, six months. One of the things also I don't think we mentioned is uh, children need assistance to brush their teeth until usually the age of eight, like seven or eight, depending on the child. Um, 
we definitely want to um, model the behavior and, you know, you know, brush in front of them. But a lot of times the dexterity is just not there for a child. Um, and when we are recommending fluorinated toothpaste or fluorinated rinses, which I think that's in the chat here, um, we do recommend uh, mouth rinse for um, older children and fluoridated ones. But we just, you know, want to make sure when they're younger than seven or eight, um, they're not swallowing the, the toothpaste or the rinse um, and also helping them brush effectively as well. So um, uh, the next slide I think is another um, milestones. Yes, yeah, so this is another milestone about when should I take the, my baby to the dentist? We actually, this is actually part of our social media toolkit. So we have a social media toolkit ready and available for, um, for any organization that's interested in posting this to their social media. I believe we have it in English and in Spanish. Um, we have all the posts ready and all the captions ready that would kind of make sense. There's lots of different options to choose from. Um, so um, that's something that we can also provide as well. We, we would need like um, view the number of views and things like that. But if anybody's interested, again, we'll leave our chat, our emails in the chat so that you guys have access to that. Lastly, um, the next slide is gonna show um, one of the, um, one of the milestone um, dental health tips for three to five year olds. So, you know, talking to the dentist if the child is older than three and still utilizing a pacifier. Because as Camilo mentioned, pacifiers and other sippy cup type things after a certain age um, can affect the way that the child's bite forms. Um, so, you know, those children that maybe have like a, a overjet or an overjet meaning like the teeth are coming on top of the bottom teeth, you can't see the bottom teeth, or like an open bite where when they close down, it's all open in the front. A lot of times it's from pacifiers or sucking thumbs, putting the fingers in their mouth. So things like that, we want to kind of wean them off of at an earlier age. And so that's kind of a reminder there for that. Um, and the last thing which we touched on already, and, and I think this was a question also in the chat, is to um, after feedings, make sure we're wiping the gums with a washcloth to remove those cavity causing bacteria and sugar. So you can start as early as a newborn. Um, you know, I know they, there's no teeth yet, and but teeth buds are all formed. All of our teeth buds are all formed. They are just waiting to erupt, if that makes sense. So your teeth, you're born with the teeth, the set of teeth you're going to have, the two sets that you're going to have. So um, important also just to get that child used to, like nobody wants, you know, an adult finger in their mouth, right? It's not, it's like not comfortable. So getting them used to going in and cleaning out as a newborn, um, it makes it much easier as they get older and then as those teeth do develop. So another milestone, again, this is all from that social media campaign, uh, excuse me, um, media campaign by LA um, County, Love Your Baby's Teeth. Uh, switching gears, we also have a lot of resources um, from Smile California, which is the state program um, educating on um, the fact that Medi-Cal, for those patients who are Medi-Cal eligible, they have dental coverage. There's a lot of our patients and community members that don't know that when they're Medi-Cal eligible, there's dental coverage. It's less than 20% utilization for those patients. Um, and a lot of times there's a lot of coverage. Um, one of the things we're seeing throughout the pandemic and we were working on is that patients were showing up to the ER, to the hospital emergency rooms for a toothache. And not going, and so then utilizing the resources there, and then having them being sent to the dentist anyways, and then utilizing masks and gloves there. You know, it was a, a really big problem because people don't know where to go when they're like in pain. So medical is covered, uh, or dental is covered through medical. This is just one example. We have several other examples uh, for babies and other age groups, but during pregnancy, um, uh, dental coverage for those medical eligible patients are. Uh, during pregnancy, they're covered throughout their whole pregnancy and 60 days postpartum on various procedures. So like there are some of them listed here, emergency services, exams, x-rays, teeth cleaning, fluoride varnish fillings, tooth room, like there's a lot of stuff that can be covered. Um, so that's something important that we'd like to mention. And again, we have those resources available. Um, the next slide just is another resource we have on brushing techniques and additional resources. So there's a proper brushing technique um, step by step here for parents um, or caregivers. Um, again, the same um, toothbrush tip, which is important about the, the amount of toothbrush, toothpaste, excuse me, 
we don't want our children ingesting a bunch of toothpaste. It's, it, you know, it's going to be toxic at a very high level. Um, so uh, that is shown also on here, the pea size amount and the grain of rice. There's several other um, resources, uh, links there. Um, and then uh, an, an info sheet for parents on kind of some toothy tips, if you will, for babies, kids, and teens as well. Um, so, and even throughout pregnancy. And so those, again, all coming from Smile California, that's a state, state program. So they're all vetted and um, really great uh, resources uh, that we can share with you all. Um, the next slide, we're almost done. The next slide, you know, we just are really excited that we were, we were able to come and kind of educate those who could make it. Um, you know, we can all kind of work together. Uh, we wanna just make sure that no child is left behind with untreated tooth decay. Um, it, all of it's preventable. Um, so, you know, working with everybody together, different organizations, um, it, kind of reaching out and educating is kind of what our goal is. And so I really thank everybody for being here. Um, if we have a few minutes, I think we're going to do the poll one more time, and then we can open it up to more questions um, if anybody has if anybody has any more questions. All right, everyone. I really have enjoyed the webinar, so I hope you did too. So we're going to take the same questions we did before, uh, but the menti.com. So just go to www.menti.com, and the code is sixty two thirty three. 7749 and that number is up here 62 33 77 49 and I'll put it in the chat too. All right, the first question is when thinking about health topics, how likely is it that you will bring up oral health with your families? So far, very likely. I have six people responding. Let's see if we can get us back up to that eight or nine mark. I need to refresh it to make sure I'm seeing all your results. Just hold on. Okay. Seven, eight, and nine, where did you go? I only have six of you. There were more of you to begin with. Okay, uh, second question. When thinking of health priorities, how important is it to care for your teeth? Very important, great. As of now, how easily can you access the proper materials to easily educate your families about oral health? Okay, great. As of now, how important is oral health during a pregnancy? All right, great. And as of now, how confident are you in showing your families how to care for their baby's new teeth? Very confident. All right, excellent, that was the last question. Turn it back over to you all. Okay, so we just wanted to open it up. Um, to any questions, that's basically all we have for you guys. But if anybody has, I know there are several questions in the chat, so we tried to answer um, as many as we could uh, that I saw at least. So, but if, if your question was in the chat and wasn't answered, um, we can absolutely answer those. Or if there's any new questions, I'm happy. It doesn't have to even be related to the presentation. Um, it can be dental related in general. I do have a question about um, fluoride, actually. Yes. I, um, I feel like recently a lot of people, a lot of parents have been concerned about fluoride, like fluoridated water and things like that. Um, 
I honestly don't know anything about it. Um, I was just wondering if you had any um, anything to share about fluoride and if there is actually like reasons to be concerned or if that's just kind of. Blown. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, um, you know, our recommendations all, always are, and even when I was in practice is always, um, you know, fluoride is, 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 an important, it's important in terms of our oral health, whether it's in the toothpaste or if it's in the water. Um, I know, I mean, we have a lot of materials on, you know, the importance of fluoride and different facts. And so we can absolutely share that um, with you if you like. Um, but I know there is a lot of uh, misinformation that, you know, some parents are like, oh, it's poisonous and this and that. And so sometimes we just like to educate that, that we, I've seen it in clinical practice, right? Kids come in, they have a very small cavity that's forming. We put a fluoride varnish on top of it. So it's like in the office, we, you know, we put a preventative kind of like vitamins for your teeth and it reverses that. Um, so, you know, um, we're, we're happy to share those materials. Um, and we also have information on um, where in LA County um, there's fluoridated water. So most of LA County is pretty, is pretty, you know, um, is pretty good. There are some areas like in the Antelope Valley um, and a few others that I can't think about, uh, think off the top of my head, um, but we're pretty good with the fluoridated water. And so we, we also recommend um, not to drink bottled water because there's no fluoride in the bottled water. Um, but you are able to utilize a Brita filter because um, I mean, I can't drink the tap water out of the tap here in LA. So I use a Brita filter, but it doesn't filter out the fluoride. Um, and, you know, for those, for, for those people, for those community members that are maybe, um, you know, not able to uh, utilize a filtration system, then we recommend cooking with the fluoride, fluoridated water. Um, so giving those kind of tips and just educating on the fact that, you know, it does, it does, it is really a preventative measure and it can reverse a lot of the, the you know, cavity causing um, bacteria in the mouth is really all, all we can kind of do, um, if that makes sense. I don't know if Camila has anything to add. Yeah, I, I, I could add a little bit to that. Uh, essentially, fluoride, what it does is it remineralizes the tooth. So uh, as you lose mineral content from the enamel, fluoride adheres itself. It's a very reactive mineral. It's natural, uh, naturally occurring in most streams and, and, and most rivers and lakes. So essentially, it, it adheres itself to, to the enamel to help remineralize that surface. And there's some pretty clear studies out there. You know, uh, community water fluoridation started uh, in the around the 40s, you know, during all the infrastructure build after World War II, and and there's some clear studies out there that show the decline of of tooth decay, you know, um, in the population by comparison, you know, prior to community fluoridation. The ADA cites a study that says it prevents at least 25 percent of tooth decay in communities. So, um, you know, th those are some some facts that you can kind of arm yourself with when talking to parents about that. Yeah, we had a question in the chat from Christina, um, clarifying a bit more about not rinsing after brushing. So this is a good um, kind of segue into that is that the reason we recommend not rinsing after brushing is that fluoridated toothpaste or the rinse, uh, mouth rinse, whatever the last thing that you're doing, we want that to kind of sit and adhere to the surfaces of the teeth so that, that that fluoride can get in there and, you know, really protect the teeth and build the teeth up if there is any areas that are demineralizing for any reason. Um, that that is um, reversed. So that is the reason that we don't really recommend rinsing, of course, not eating or drinking after we brush, um, but definitely not trying to rinse out some of that um, fluoride that's, that's there um, residually. Hi, I have a question for you. Um, thank you for your presentation. This is really um, interesting and important information. So I, I'm really glad you were here to talk about it. Um, I'm thinking about the families who might not have um, like historically have like traditions around brushing their teeth or maybe this is like new information for them and they don't have like those routines set up. Are there any like books or um, videos or anything that would make um, that we could give to them that would be kind of like a fun way to introduce this in their routines um, aside from just giving the information but kind of like continuing to um, share that with them in, a, in an exciting way. <laughs> Yeah. Did you want to take this one, Camilo, or did you want me to answer? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can both talk to it. Yeah. There's a lot of great resources out there. For example, Sesame Street has a lot of um, uh, information about, uh, you know, how to care for, for children's teeth. And that's a fun resource, um, you know, that 
also, uh, I, I used to work for, for a program from Colgate called Bright Smiles, Bright Futures, and they have tons of information, uh, you know, fun videos and uh, even like uh, some audiobooks and different things like that that you can share with, uh, with families as well. I'll put the link down to that because that has a lot of, uh, you know, good resources for, for children ages 12 and under, and, uh, and it's a fun way to... Um, you know, just kind of model fun behavior at home. Uh, another thing to add is uh, sharing with parents that toothbrushing doesn't just have to happen in front of the sink in the bathroom if they're having a hard time getting their kids to brush. You know, you can catch them while they're watching their favorite TV show or right before they're getting ready to go to bed and they're a little bit more relaxed, you know, different things like that that you can also share with parents on, you know, how to initiate those oral health routines when you're having a hard time. Um, let me put yeah, I just chat. put in the chat um, from, thanks Camila for answering that. That is, Camila has such great uh, experience working with kids on that Colgate van, um, going around everywhere more, more than I do really working. Um, I didn't really work with too many kids when I was in dental practice. I love kids, but in a dental chair, it's challenging. I have a lot of respect for uh, pediatric dentists and hygienists. Um, but regardless, I did put in the chat, choosehealthla.com. Uh, that's part of the LA County's media campaign. They have a really catchy song um, in English and in Spanish. I think it's also bilingual. And so that's another great tool. Like, I mean, it gets stuck in my head if I hear it more than twice. So we will play, with, play it for you guys today, but it's a really good. So those are the kind of things that, you know, maybe you can introduce. Um, and more than the parents, I think it's like geared, like it's like marketed towards the child. And then, you know, and once the child's excited about doing it, it makes it much easier, right? Because then they're like asking, like, oh, I want to brush. Um, they're also, I know it can be, I mean, usually the electric toothbrushes, once they get a little older, or the spin brushes and things like that, have apps. Also, I know everything like kids are very um, high tech these days. And so they have an app. And so you can actually follow along. That's what I would tell my patients in, in practice. You can follow along like where you've brushed and where you've missed and things like that. And so, you know, those kind of things and modeling the behavior, I think is the, the main thing, right? Is, is getting, getting that routine set and modeling that behavior um, along with some of the other things Camila and I mentioned, I think um, could kind of help with that. I just had an unrelated question. Are our home visitors today, are they mostly from, uh, what areas are you guys from? Um, are from the same area in terms of location in, in LA? Just curious. Okay. You can can answer like for our network across the whole LABVN network. Um, we, we're kind of all over the whole of LA County. So we have, um, home visiting programs up in Antelope Valley and then Long Beach and um, kind of everywhere in between. Um, so I think the, the majority of like our clients actually come from the metro LA area, but we do have okay. quite a bit of um, reach all across the whole county. Oh, great. I see everybody's putting in the chat, so that's great. So who would, I, I'm the liaison for spa, we go by mega spa, so mega spa two, which is three and four. So St. Gabriel Alley and Metro. And I'm the liaison for uh, spa seven and eight. South Bay and uh, Southeast LA. Any other questions? So I'm gonna leave my email. I know it's up on the screen, but I'll leave my email in the chat also. So if anybody's interested in, and we shared like a very, like a very small portion of the resources that we have. So if you're interested in like any specific resource, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to, see if we can, we have it or um, we can find it from somewhere. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. But other than that, we don't have anything else for you guys. All right, well, thank you all so much for your, for attending today. And thank you so much to our speakers, y'all. This was really a great webinar and I loved all the campaigns you shared too and just how practical the knowledge was that was given today that home visitors can share with their families. I'll be sending an email to you both asking for some of these materials that you brought with you today. That'd be great. We can get those out to the whole consortium and to our network too. Great, thank Fantastic. you, Jenna, for being so involved. 
um, and, and, and inviting us to speak. We're, we're happy to do other presentations if, if needed, um, uh, you know, so thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You have all, I'll have a good rest of your day. Bye everyone. Bye. Take care everybody. Bye.